my grandfather served in Germany. He fought in the Battle of the Bulge. He won a Bronze Star. And I've heard his war stories since I was old enough to talk. And yes, what AOC went through, she shouldn't have had to go through. But to pretend that that is like service in the that's comparable to soldiers storming the beaches of Normandy or doing what my grandfather did, driving a tank into Berlin, <laughs> that that's somehow the same thing. I mean, if, if AOC stubbed her toe, did she want a purple heart for that? I mean, it's just stupid. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me, I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> That's right, it is the return to the Daily Dose of Stupid for our favorite congressperson, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And so she is going to be the feature of this one. Now, a lot of you know that AOC, not exactly an expert in a lot of different fields of study, right? Which is interesting because she actually does have two undergraduate degrees. He ha she has a degree in foreign relations and a degree in economics which is fascinating because she doesn't seem to know anything about either of those two things. So yeah, an, an expert in economics, not really an expert in foreign re relations. No, can't even name foreign cities, which I can't either, but I also don't have a degree in it and don't claim to know about that stuff. Uh, not really an expert on things like political science, not too good at history, not so great at basic math or, you know, rudimentary elementary level logic but there is one thing that no matter how you feel about aoc whether you like her whether you don't like her whether you are a member of the fan club or not there is one thing that i don't think anybody liberal or conservative would contest and that is aoc is an expert in this one particular area of life she is one of the best might be the world's leading authority on playing the victim. She is absolutely excellent at it. And I think a lot of it, I mean, whenever you ask the best coaches, the best uh, debate team coaches, like my dad did, he always gave this answer, or whether you're asking like the, the best football coach, the, the best basketball coach, whatever it is. I mean, Nick Saban actually talks about this as well. You want to know how they have success, how they become experts in that? Practice, 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 practice. And that's exactly what AOC does is she constantly practices being the victim, and because of that, she is the world's leading authority on how to play the victim. And this week is going to be no different on that. So the thing that she's talking about is playing the victim when it came to the uh, January 6th Capitol riots. Now, here's the thing. I understand that it is a scary thing. If you were a member of Congress, you, re Republican, Democrat, whatever, you had a right to be scared when that was going on. So I'm not trying to mitigate this. But what I am pointing out is that the way that she talks about it and the way that the left in general talks about it so ridiculously overblows the thing that it's not even funny. I mean, we've got right now several hundred people that have been arrested and, and seemingly based on some news reports in, in really terrible conditions with uh, without some of their basic rights as prisoners, including uh, a, a attorney client privilege, things like that. And so I don't really want to get into that. That's beyond the scope of what we're going to, to look at tonight. But the left has so overblown this thing, talking about it being a sedition and an uprising and an armed resistance, even though in testimony, on the Hill the other day, they actually asked one of the people that was working with the Capitol Police during that time, how many firearms did you confiscate during this? And she said zero. How many firearms were uh, confiscated uh, in the Capitol or, or on Capitol grounds during that day? 
To my knowledge, we have not recovered any on that day from any other arrests at the scene at this point. But I don't want to speak on behalf of Metro and Capitol Police, okay. but to my knowledge, none. How, how many shots were fired that we know of? I believe the only shots that were fired were the ones that resulted in the death of the um, one lady. And so they're acting like this was some kind of, they, they stormed the Bastilla and showed up with a bunch of guns and, and set up like a autonomous zone inside the Capitol. Didn't happen at all. Happened in Seattle, but it didn't happen. It did not happen in the Capitol. And, and that doesn't mean that it was not incredibly stupid, that it was illegal, that I'm fine with them you know, within their rights as American citizens, because we still have that even for prisoners, that they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Totally okay with that. But the left is so overblown, this thing, and AOC is no exception to that. <clears throat> so I say all that to say, I understand why AOC or any member of Congress would be legitimately frightened about this. If you were at your place of work, regardless of what you do for a living, and you saw a bunch of very angry people storming into your workplace, regardless of the context, that would be a reason to be worried. And you should be worried. That, that would be a reasonable human response to that. But AOC has blown it so far out of proportion. She's talked about how she's going to therapy and, and treating it like she has PTSD and everything. And really, I think that that was sort of, solidified and, and we can take a look at the story that she did and, and this is a, not the story we're looking at today the story from a couple months ago where she was talking about there were people yelling at her inside her office well it turns out the person that was yelling at her was a police officer and the police officer was asking if she was okay now once somebody actually pointed out to her that the only person that she did interact with during that time was a police officer she said, yeah, but I didn't know if he was there to kill me or not, which again shows exactly what we're talking about with AOC. She is so bought into this insane leftist narrative that she genuinely believes that if a police officer shows up, there's like a 50-50 shot that he's going to shoot her just because she's not white. I, they've so bought into their own narrative, they believe their own lies. And so AOC was like, well, yeah, I, okay, it was a police officer. She kind of got caught with her hand in the cookie jar lying about it. She's like, okay, it was a police officer that talked to me about that. But the thing is, I didn't know if the police officer was then going to shoot me. O okay, now you're being ridiculous. Being scared? Sure. Being anxious? Sure. Barricading yourself in your office? Reasonable thing to do considering the circumstances. But being scared that a police officer is going to shoot you just because you happen to not be white or a member of Congress? No, that's crazy town. And there was no reason to be afraid of that. And so this is the latest iteration of that insanity that she has put forth. Let's go ahead and look at this graphic from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. This is from Yahoo News. I thought I was, sorry, I almost forgot AOC voice. I like thought I was going to die, she recalled in an emotional Instagram live in February. I like have never been quieter in my entire life. Okay. I totally believe that. I know that she's blowing this out of proportion, but that part of the quote, 100% legitimate. I was not even there, and I will vouch for that. I am certain that she has never been quieter in her life because she cannot shut up for more than five seconds. And I say this is somebody who, you know, talks for a living. And then it continues on. In her interview with Latino USA, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said that the insurrection was deeply traumatizing for the members of Congress who effectively served in war. She said the event also, like, implicated the actual legislative process, sorry, impacted, in Congress, according to NBC News. Okay, it did impact the legislative process in Congress, that is true. It was such a terrible, bad insurrection. I mean, it was, it was so horrible and, and so frightful and, and came so, like, within an eyelash of just completely taking over the country and, and we were going to be run by the MAGA crowd, that about six hours after it happened, Congress was right back in the exact same place and went ahead and certified the election. That's how terrible it was. It, it derailed Congress for almost six hours. Really, that, that's your best play. Th this is the thing that could have ended the country as we know it. And six hours later, you're in the same building doing exactly what you were doing six hours earlier. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, still bad. But we act as though this thing had a legitimate shot at ending the country, and it just didn't. It never even came close to that. The people that were arrested weren't even armed. If this was a coup d'etat, it was by far the worst coup d'etat of all time. This is like the America's Funniest Home Videos version of a coup d'etat. <laughs> but this is the way that they're trying to depict it. And I've always said this about AOC. I think this is the best way to understand Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's like if a Disney Channel character, like like let's say Disney Channel did a, a a series, a kid series, and the premise of the sitcom was somehow a 13-year-old girl gets elected to the House of Representatives. That's AOC. <laughs> That's it's like we're watching Disney Channel making one of their shows real life when watching her because everything is the biggest problem that has ever happened. She's like a 13-year-old girl. Uh, every little thing that happens to her is the the biggest problem that has ever been in the history of mankind. She's terrified of garbage disposals and doesn't understand what they are. Um, she, you know, she can't contemplate or or think with a, a logical thought for more than ten seconds. And everything that happens to her, she's always the victim. She's the most victimized person in human history. Um, but you know, that's that's where we stand with AOC. And I the. The most telling thing of that whole thing, because she has such a lack of perspective on things like history or, or like other people's experiences, she genuinely believes that this event that she went through, which again, I could see as being scary. I, I could see somebody being rattled afterward, but she's going to therapy like she's, you know, been through a hostage situation. And afterward, talking about how effectively that's the same thing as serving in war. No, granted. Never served in war myself, so I'm not going to pretend that I do know what that's like, because I don't. But I have family members that did. I know a lot of people that did. Montgomery is a military town. There's a lot of vets here. I have a lot of friends that served. Several of them have been on my show multiple times. Our own, uh, uh, back when I was at 1440, Kevin Elkins, a paratrooper. I mean, there's vets all over the place. This, this city has vets everywhere. You, you see people walking down in fatigues on a regular basis in the city of Montgomery. And... I can tell you, my grandfather served in Germany. He fought in the Battle of the Bulge. He won a Bronze Star. And I've heard his war stories since I was old enough to talk. And yes, what AOC went through, she shouldn't have had to go through. But to pretend that that is like service in the... That's comparable to soldiers storming the beaches of Normandy or doing what my grandfather did, driving a tank into Berlin. <laughs> that that's somehow the same thing. I mean, if, if AOC stubbed her toe, did she want a purple heart for that? I mean, it's just stupid. That obviously is not a fair comparison. And no, no rational, sane thinking person, of none of those things AOC actually is, would ever make that comparison. However, there is actually a pretty good comparison that we have recently. Steve Scalise was nearly killed and two other Republican congressmen were shot when a Bernie Sanders supporter, somebody who actually worked for his campaign, not Bernie's fault, not AOC's fault, but this is the person that AOC recently endorsed for president, don't blame them for them having a crazy person that worked for their campaign. But a person from that campaign opened up fire and tried to kill about 30% of Congress. I mean, we, they would have killed, um, I, I think it depends on how you were counting it, but it was, it was anywhere between 10 to 30% of Congress because of all the people that were there at that baseball field that day. <clears throat> and I remember because I covered it that morning. I actually had then Senator Luther Strange on the program with me from Washington to discuss what had been going on that day. So I, I remember that very well. Our own Congressman Mo Brooks, who's running for the Senate right now, was actually there and, and may have saved Steve Scalise's life because he took off his belt to use as a tourniquet to stop the bleeding, and, and Steve Scalise barely made it. And if Steve Scalise had said, even though he almost died and was shot, that, oh, yeah, that... That's basically the same as serving in war. No, it's not. 
I'm not trying to measure and say one's better, one's worse. There's a lot of people that served in war that never got shot like Steve Scalise did. And, and that was a terrible experience. And I'm sure that they're very, you know, the Scalise family was probably pretty darn rattled after that. Understandably so. But she's now saying that having to wait in her office and be quiet and have a police officer come by and check if she's okay, that is exactly the same thing as serving in war. But even though we have something that actually was kind of similar to serving in a war, in Steve Scalise getting almost mortally wounded and finally coming out of that alive, even if he had said that was the same as serving in war, I'd say that was dumb. Because as horrible as it was, it was an event in time. It was one thing that happened. My grandfather went to Germany for two years. And he said, I only got scared once. I was scared when I got on the boat to head over there and I stayed scared until I got back on American soil. <laughs> and that's how they felt. They were terrified for two years straight, walking around Europe, freezing their rear ends off, uh, you know, dr trying to find food, worrying if they're going to come up against the enemy. I, I mean, it's like two years of constant terror and having to engage the enemy, fight them, fight back. You never know if the guys that you're standing next to are going to make it back alive. You don't know if you're going to make it back alive. That's something that they went through for just about two solid years. But yeah, sure, AOC, one afternoon where you have to hide behind your desk with the lights off and, and hide behind the safety of a police officer guarding you. That's exactly the same thing. Don't give me a break. This is a blatant insult to every single person that has ever fought for the Stars and Stripes. And I'm not among them. I'm not pretending like I am. AOC apparently thinks it's okay for her to do this. But the idea that that is an equivalency, and not just people that have served, because that would be a big enough slap in the face to them, but specifically the people that served and served in wartime, which is significantly more difficult to do. And even the ones that didn't serve in wartime would tell you that. She's saying that that's basically exactly the same thing. We, we've effectively served in war. No. AOC is not a serious person, and anybody that takes them seriously is not intelligent. I'm sorry. There's just no nicer way to put it. If you think that she is a serious person, when she constantly makes stupid comparisons and analogies like this, I honestly can't take you seriously because I question your own mental competency if you take her as a serious person. The left needed the Capitol riots. They had to have them. And this is evidenced by the fact that what they're using it to justify now, keeping a, a permanent, I don't even know what you would call it, but because battalion's not exactly right because it's more than that, but they're keeping a, a number of National Guardsmen in the Capitol seemingly in perpetuity forever, they supposedly went home, I believe, this Sunday, but actually they still kept about twenty to 40,000 of them around. Um, they have the, the terror threat bulletin that was supposed to end in April, but they've extended now all the way to August, saying that right-wing extremism is the biggest terror threat in the country, even though this is like the one event that they can point to. No mention of BLM, no mention of Antifa, when there were literally cities, and including Washington, D.C., burning and the idiots that stormed the Capitol on the 6th. Yes, it's dumb. Yes, I don't condone it, but they went in and they broke stuff. That's bad, but it's not anywhere near to the level of the other things on the left that they just brush aside and say are mostly peaceful. But the left needed that one thing that they can point to. And, and frankly, this is the best that they've got. It's pathetic. It's sad. But it's the only thing that they can point to to justify saying that conservatives are somehow dangerous. And so they have to hold on to that narrative of conservatives being dangerous and wanting to take over the country by force. Because when you constantly try to paint your opponents as fascist and they don't do anything fascist, it's kind of hard to keep that narrative going even for your own people. <laughs> If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman. So if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me?
What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?